What's the embarrassing phase did you go through as a teenager? I had hair over one eye because I thought I looked like Jessica Rabbit. Spoiler. I definitely did not look like Jessica Rabbit. After that, I shaved the underside of my hair along the little girl on the crow. Can't rain all the time. Thinking that my angst would be seen by potential mates as mysterious and cool, when in reality I was just insufferable and self-absorbed. British accent. I'm from the southern US. When I was 15, well before Avril Lavinia happened, skater boys were the most attractive guys in my social environment. My friend, my sister and I would spend evenings hanging around the skate park, checking out the guys and fighting over which one of us would get to date the cutest guy. After about a month of this we conceded that the answer was none of us. I started a rap crew based on Winnie the Pooh. I was Pooh Daddy. My friend was the notorious T.I.G. And another friend was Big O. We were writing a song called Honey Rhymes with Money. The name of this group? Pooh Tang Clan. Edit. To all the people asking for tracks. Unfortunately the world wasn't ready for the wokeness of our raps about Fujin and the 100 acre words. My beard started growing only on one side. And I refused to shave it. Edit. Holy it. This post has more karma than I had before making it. After almost 7 years of being on Reddit. Thankfully it does relate to my username. I feel like my purpose in life has been served. I did the whole dye my hair black. Black fingernail polish. Black smudgy eyeliner. I was a emo dude. But I also loved gangster rap. So I worked big chains with Batman symbols on them. It was a mess. Cheesy. Overwrought love letters to girls I dated for a month or two. Sometimes I just want to hold you until you duck and crumble. I decided it was a fantastic idea to shave my eyebrows a finger width thick in 7th grade. My parents only recently told me they called them Hitler brows behind my back. Edit. Here's a picture for proof explanation. God help me. Edit 2. Thank you for my first gold. Silver and platinum kind strangers. Glad my Hitler brows made you laugh. When I was a teenager I was huge WWF fan and there was this wrestler named Edge. Who would perch in high places inside the arena and just watch the matches for months before he made his actual debut. Because of this, I used to do the same thing because I thought it was badass. I used to find high places and just perch there like a gargoyle for hours. In trees. On roofs of people's houses. On ledges. Anywhere that I could climb. And I would just sit there, crouched motionless and watch people's reactions when they would see me. I bought Happy Bunny merch from Hot Topic Unironically, along with those trip raver pants with the chains and manic panic amplified hair dyeing blue. I owned band tees without ever listening to the bands because they looked x hardcore xxx. I wrote angsty dbz and trigon yaoi fanfiction, multiple, that were over 100k words. Deviant art. When I first got Facebook, I had a phase where all of my status updates had to have a song lyric in it. I was a stoner skater that didn't smoke pot, didn't skate, I did however wear really baggy JNCOs and not wash my hair very often. I used to walk around school throwing a bouncy ball against the walls everywhere I went. Edit. No this isn't really cringy but more so something that would look strange for someone not in high school to do everywhere he went. Being into rave culture. I had a tongue piercing and wore hilariously huge alien pants with tassels on them. Sigh. Edit. Oops. UFO pants. Not alien. B. I went through a pretty long a not lucky a third generals phase combined with an RI embarrassment and edge lord atheist phase. It wasn't pretty. Manic pixie delusional idiot. I thought by trying to turn myself into the opposite of every female stereotype, super into six. Not into commitment. Loves sports and booze. Not into emotional BS. Not into makeup or standard fashion. Not into gifts. Said PMS was a load of crap. ETC. Guys would be dying to be with me. They were gauche to all their friends about how I was so cool and not like other girls. Turns out that being a big fake isn't that attractive at all. I hated my naturally curly hair and straightened my hair out. Badly. Every day. All my pictures look ducking ridiculous. Like a blow dried guido from the 80s. 
I spent a few months in the 9th grade dressing up in a matching tracksuit because I thought it was so ducking cool. I looked like a Russian teenager drug dealer. I was a hardcore communist for like, 3 years in college. Like, I seriously believed Stalin didn't kill anyone and it was a massive capitalist propaganda effort to make it seem like he was a murderous dictator. I'm really glad this phase was almost completely digital and it mainly took the format of long involved debates about communism in now defunct message boards. Was far too good at dance dance revolution. And would go places just to play it. I also wore those giant pants with too many straps so I jingled like a change purse. Edit. Thank you for my first reddit silver. Internet. I'm glad my teenage idiocy brought some laughs. And EDR is a paragon of arcade going. I just take it way less seriously than I used to. Edit 2. Holy it. Gold. Thanks mom. I spent two weeks in the box phase. Backstory. I was a firm believer in be a kid while you can and make school memorable. Also I was just overall bad at reading situations for most of my years growing up. One day prom's coming up and some guy hides in a giant cardboard box to surprise his girlfriend. I later found this box in the middle of the hallway and had one of my stupidest ideas ever. I took this box back to class and began repairing it. Not just before and after but during class. Honestly I think the only reason I got away with it is because it was religion class and the teacher probably though I was challenged. I cut a hole in the front of the box for my eyes and wrote turtles are nice on it. For two whole week I would walk from class to class with that box thinking I was solid ducking snake. At one point I brought the box home for the weekend. On the way my friends came and tried to take the box and I actually chased after them. Should have just let them have it. After two weeks of my friends telling me to get rid of it I finally jumped on the box and crushed it. Worst part was this was in grade 11. I guarantee that the whole school thought I had some form of mental disability and I really don't blame them. I still lie awake at night just coming to terms with the fact that everyone from my high school remembers it. Moral of the story, don't. Just don't. I used to want to sound like a cool, edgy, emo writer or something. So I would narrate things that were happening around me, out loud. I remember at a family event we were roasting esmores and I was just like fire. Slowly burning. Destroying and turning everything black. I can't remember anymore because I'm cringing too hard. Reddit. Kind of embarrassed this has so many upvotes and comments meaning so many people have read it help me. I was a very awkward introvert with some surprisingly serious anger issues. Reading back on a lot of stuff I wrote back then. I'm a bit surprised. I too was a scene kid. MCR. Patched. Linkin Park. I wore obscene graphic tees. Jihadis. Those animal hats with the long flaps on the sides that functioned as gloves paws. Had an eyebrow piercing. Wore feathers in my hair. Fingerless gloves. Fishnet. Those thick rubber bracelets with band names and other phrases like OMG and WTF on them. Scene bangs. Smoked cigs and put them out on myself just so I could feel something. R-A-W-R-X-D. I was also a brinny so I was basically the most duckable person in high school. I've said this before but I was an emo. Not any kind of emo or XD raw nuzzles you type of emo. Edit. Are you guys upvoting this because you all were like me or is to haunt me on my comment section latter? Edit. So. It seems like my internet reputation is ruined. Well THX for da gold. You guys better be aware that if I ever stumble any of you. I'll nuzzle the living it out of you. Edit. THX for da silver. XD. This makes me very happy colon 3. Stay exding and nuzzling through life my friends. The misunderstood writer phase. I wrote daily blogs on myspace that were basically just cryptic. Stream of conscious drivel. My friends ate that it up. And I was so, so, so full of myself. In my early 20s. When I started dating a girl that didn't know me from those years. I went and deleted all the posts because I knew she'd eventually find my MySpace page. Part of me wanted to preserve it to look back at. But I was afraid that she wouldn't get it. Nuked it all. Thank god I did. I'm glad I scrubbed that it when I did. Nowadays I bet it'd be way more difficult to truly delete it all. At the time I considered my writing to be avant-garde. But now in my 30s I've realized that artists often label things as avant-garde. When they really mean to say it's bad. 
I grew up in a small town. In New York. Graduating class of 100. I was always a bit of a redneck but my senior year of high school. I kicked it into overdrive. Blue jeans. Sleeveless t-shirt. Work boots. Cowboy hat every day. Also got a barbed wire tattoo. Tried chew. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't grow a bear or mustache. But I know I would have. Had I been able to. Luckily. I haven't found any photographic evidence of this phase. In middle school I went through a phase of slicking my long hair back into a tight bun at the nape of my neck. I used a ton of gel to make sure my hair didn't move. I also only plucked one eyebrow and made it super arched. I was super jealous of all the girls who were thin and girly. I look back on my middle school years and cringe. Blessed be puberty. Massive weeb lord. Now I'm a clandestine weeb lord. At like 14-15 I finally came to the conclusion that I didn't believe in any god at all. And felt pretty betrayed and angry about it because religious organizations felt like some kinda scam. This led to a period of some pretty strong anti-theism that, looking back on, was just plain obnoxious if nothing else. Being a brummy, in middle school I was sucked into it from my friends. And after humility and life lessons I dropped at it and never looked back. My friends and I all had liver journals and we would regularly passive aggressively communicate with each other through them. Liver journal entry. Ugh. I can't believe how crazy Sam has been lately. I know her boyfriend broke up with her. But that was months ago. She's no fun to hang around anymore. Sam's liver journal entry. The following day. I am sick. And tired. Of people who don't understand what IT's like to have a broken heart. Cutting myself. Now I'll have these ugly scars for the rest of my life. I went through this really socially awkward phase as a teenager. That started about a decade earlier and has continued on the last couple decades. There were only like 3 kids in the whole school who were into martial arts. And I took it too far into the whole mystical Asia thing. I wasn't a weeaboo or anything. Or a koraboo. It was taekwondo. I just dreamed of learning the mysteries of Kai so I could do crazy kung fu it. My only defense is that this was well before the internet and lots of people smarter than me believed in that stuff too. Insane Teen Wolf style sideburns. Ambarrassmentish speech opinions. Obsessed with anime before it was popular or even socially acceptable at all. Was always drawing in public and my art and stories were awful. Crippling depression self harm. I needed help but did not seek it for years. Turned out okay. Married. Have kid. Corporate job. Sideburns of a dignified respectable length. Drawing got better. Realized that my smarts were just it loads of useless trivia. Realized my smart opinions were naive. Still love my 90s anime. As a result of my depression I was very much like one of those I am very smart people. Even bordering the segregized level as well. Thankfully I got my it together. I was obsessed with Alvin and the Chipmunks. Including renaming myself Simon. Cringe. I had older cousins that I looked up to. They were into Ike so they dressed like jugglers without the face paint. I didn't know what Ike was. I just knew I wanted to be like my cousins. So from like 13 to 15 I accidentally dressed like a jugalo. Lots of bad pictures from those days. I had business cards made, were a before vista print, that had my name, number and title of knight in shining armor. I would hand these out, with a smile, to any person that I found attractive, in or out of school. I thought I was really suave but it is only embarrassing now as a group of newer friends and I were discussing this and them pretty much laughing at me for doing this. That edgy hot topic phase, it's literally the most low risk form of teenage rebellion. But as a black kid, that it can really duck with your parents. And just fuels that teenage self-righteous this is who I am. Mum feeling. While I'm nearly 30 and have obviously moved past the teenage it, the hot topic phase definitely influenced much of my current aesthetic choices. So I guess it never quite left. My. 30M. Favorite shirt for a while in high school was a baby pink t-shirt that said lesbian on ecstasy in white across the front. I'm. Really not sure on that one. I talked and acted like I was from the 18th century. And even adapted my handwriting to include those old style ligatures. 
between S and T. For example, I bought a frilly shirt second hand and wore it with a waistcoat and a vaguely old fashioned military jacket. This peaked when I was 14 or so and no, it didn't make me the popular girl. Luckily I wore a school uniform, UK, so people only witness these terrible outfits on our rare non-uniform days. Fake barbed wire sticker tattoo phase. Trying to be rock goth dart all evidence of that phase is burned. I played Dungeons and Dragons and had a mullet. The girls were queuing up, mate. Maybe I'm still going through it, but the extreme need to constantly put on an angry face when walking through crowds of people and down hallways. I don't know why I do it other than to appear unapproachable and that's probably a bad idea. Had a massive vocaloid phase about 2 years back. I feel like this applies more to millennials than anyone else. But I went through that edgelord phase, you know, where you'd have even essence on blast and hate everything. The iconoclastic nonconformist that wanted nothing more than to be liked and accepted by my iconoclastic nonconformist friends who were all being iconoclastic nonconformists in the same way. Hating everything I didn't like that was also popular, brimies, religion, furries, etc. Man I was goth -aff, but a fake. You never really grow out of your goth phase, you just refine it. Most of my clothes are still black. I still collect oddities and have lots of skulls and stuff. I still love metal and go to shows. I just do my makeup a lot better now and I'm not externalizing my depression. Stalinism. I am serious. Even got a teacher yelling at me once. However, my excuse is it's because I'm Russian, though I live in a EU country, and it's very typical for people to believe that Stalin did nothing wrong and the only reason why Westerners are criticizing him and making up atrocities, which are not made up, of course, is because Stalin industrialized Russia and established a public education system. While Westerners would love to see Russians uneducated, illiterate peasants and without any industry, my views were so anti-historical and anti-reality and retrospect. There was that time frame where quiet little me wanted to stand out. I wore different types of Osiris shoes, one a navy bow and the other white and red. Wore jeans with gaping holes in them. Some I had to wear shorts underneath to cover certain areas. Used to do the weirdest stuff to my hair. I must have looked homeless walking around school. Imagining myself as a Marvel superhero and having fantasies about my secret identity being revealed during a fight in front of the whole school. So everyone would be shocked and amazed at how wrong they were about me. I believed I could see like people's familiars. When I was a freshman in high school, I was so wildly in my own imagination that I had an entire group of friends converted to this. There was a giant enemy animal thing that was always trying to kill us. I remember texting my friends and saying that the evil one is watching me in the classroom. Furiously masturbating all the time. Wrote a lot of poetry, ended up joining the poetry club and ran becoming president of it, mostly to impress one girl who I think went to like 4 meetings. I honestly cringe way more at my preteen, middle school, self who is basically incapable of socializing outside my group of three friends and was just an overall d mean person to my family. Really just a horrible little it. There was a time I was so depressed about my own future prospects of being born in a third world country, that I hated my country and its culture. I loathed how we are not western and modern, and was embarrassed to see myself as citizen of my own country. I deeply regret for having those feelings now. I do not respect anything more than my country and culture. I considered myself a bit of a player. I cringe now when I think of me back then. I had my emo phase. I shared this a while back. I thought I was a werewolf in 9th grade, recruited dozens of students into a sipek and even managed to rope a counselor into it which wound up with her getting fired for hosting simagic rituals with us instead of counseling us. I can't live it down to this day. I went through a raspberry beret stage, and no, I hadn't even heard of the song. Just found it in my mom's closet and decided it looked cool. A bit of a nice guy phase. Thought I could get girls out of my league by being nice and basically an accommodating doormat. My dad actually set me straight. 
told me basically lots of people are nice with lots of other good qualities and work to take care of themselves physically, which of course helps. That I should work on being a better version of myself and the rest sorta works itself out. He was right. When I was 13-15. The annoying know-it-all atheist who likes to provoke everyone. Thank god that phase ended. Pun intended. I was a preteen up in the early 80s and my friends and I were a bit like the kids of Stranger Things. We were into arcade. Star Trek. Pulp sci-fi books. Lord of the Rings. Dant. Hex strategy games. Trading cards. It was awkward in those days. Today it is romanticized. My age 17 I was interested in girls so drastically altered my image to comply. Much to the chagrin of my GKia friends. Probably trying to fit in with the jocks popular kids. For context I'm unathletic as duck but not fat or anything. Also my social skills suck. There is one good thing I can get out of my experiences. And it's that I never tried this on someone of the opposite sex. Probably will save me a great deal of slightly more embarrassing memories. Rebelled against teen pop by getting heavily into classical music and opera. To be fair. It was the late 80s early 90s so there was some terrible pop music around. But in retrospect I should just have pulled the stick out of my ass and enjoyed the good stuff. And I can't actually play an instrument. So I didn't even get to enjoy the social side of being in the school orchestra or whatever. Wearing clothes like the Matrix. Huge Spice Girls fan. When I say huge I mean Ray watching the same VHS tape of some concert they did in the Mideast daily for a year. Dressed up in a suit to see Baby Spice at much music. Toronto. And gave her flowers. Blew up a pic of me handing them to her and put it on my wall. Complete obsession. This was ages 16-19 and I'm a dude. 